Hello everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. This is Alan and today I'm going to be creative. Thanks to George. I received an email this morning from a chap named George. George said that he had watched all of my videos that's a lot of videos. He had watched every one of my videos and listened to all of my podcasts and he hated them. <laughs> Seriously. He'd watched them all and he didn't like them because they weren't creative enough that it was like sitting through lectures. You know how when somebody says something to you that gets under your skin there's oftentimes a grain of truth in there and that's why it was so irritating to hear it. Well, ever since I got the email, I've been thinking about that and uh, I think he may be right. He may be onto something. Now, I thought about that after I responded to his email, um, which was impetuous and I probably should have thought about it first, but I promptly made a, a little green man out of pipe cleaners and a jumping spider out of clay and pipe cleaners and I sent them to George to show him I was creative. He, di he didn't respond. Today I am going to do something creative. Normally when I do a creative video uh, it's something that I've already done before. I know how to do it. I know how to set up the equipment and get the look I'm looking for. But what I want to do today is a little different. I know the image that I want to get, or I think I know the image I want to get, but I really don't know how I'm going to get there. Um, many, many years ago, I was, uh, I was at a botanical garden taking pictures. Um, really just uh, to get comfortable with a, a new camera body that I had and it was a gorgeous day so I was walking around and uh, I don't normally do a lot of that kind of photography but um, I had a, a, a new macro lens and I took a photograph of a, I think it was a primrose, some kind of delicate little flower um, that had just been watered. Uh, the gardeners had just been spraying the flower bed down and I got one of those pictures completely by accident of uh, water drops that were lensing the flowers around them and uh, creating this really cool look. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a great photograph by any means but I was struck by uh, how cool the water drop looked. Now of course since then uh, everybody's been doing it. I've seen, I've seen thousands of pictures of water drops and I've done plenty of hanging water drop pictures myself just, just for fun. So let me tell you the picture that I want to make and then I'll show you what I've got set up as my starting point and then we'll start taking pictures and see what happens. I am a museum and gallery goer. Uh, every chance I get or every chance I used to get uh, to, to spend a day uh, in a museum or a gallery, I would jump at it. And of all of the artists that I admire, uh, there, is, there is one whose work has always been special for me, and that is Salvador Dali, the surrealist painter. When I was 11 years old, I bought my first poster to put up in my bedroom. And uh, while everybody else was buying Led Zeppelin and David Bowie posters, I got a uh, poster through the mail of Geopoliticus Child watching the birth of the new man. If you haven't seen that picture, you should look at it. It's just amazing. There's so much in it. And Dali's just been a, a, a hero of mine for forever, as long as I can remember. Another one of uh, Dali's iconic images is the melting watch. He did a lot of uh, melting, dissolving, uh, deconstructing 
uh, paintings of, of items you're familiar with, like elephants with gigantic long legs and, and so on. And I have long thought that a Dali-esque photograph that kind of captures the feel and the essence of, uh, of his work would be something uh, that I'd love to do. And I just, I've never really made a, a concerted effort to do that. And that's what this video is about. I see this as uh, an experimental um, effort and that whatever I learn from doing this video today, uh, I will uh, I'll fine tune so that I can come up with exactly the photograph that I want. Today, it's all about figuring out how to get the image. So aside from my love uh, of Dali's paintings, uh, this is also inspired by some of the water drop photography that's been popular in the last few years. All I have done so far is set up a camera and a couple of speed lights. Rather than try to describe exactly what it is I'm trying to do here, look at one of Dali's paintings, uh, The Melting Watch or Deconstruction are a good place to start. And you'll, you'll see exactly what it is I'm trying to, trying to do here. Um, and I have never, I've never tried this. I've, I've never done any of these things. We're getting ready to, to start. So it could well be a complete flop, but it'll be a creative flop. So the setup for this is going to be vertical. And I'll show you how I have the camera positioned in just a second. I haven't decided on the light. Uh, I've been thinking about using reflected light, colored light, um, a, a large soft box or speed lights. And I really don't know what's going to work. So we'll just have to experiment. Um, the key element of this is, of course, that I'm going to photograph something through a water drop. But in order to get the appearance that I want, I don't want a round water drop. I want a distorted water drop that is going to lens the image in such a way that it looks like it's melting. Um, and uh, this will make a lot more sense when, when we get started. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to photograph a, an object or a two-dimensional representation of an object. And seeing as I'm not exactly sure how the water drops are going to lens the light, I have an idea how they're going to do it but I don't have practical knowledge. I think it's going to be easier for me to start out with a flat two-dimensional representation of something and shoot perpendicular so that I can see the effects that the little tiny water lenses have um, in, a, in a, the most controlled environment, which will be two-dimensional flat. So for my subject, I wanted something bright and intense and oversaturated and uh, um, eye-catching because uh, I, I really want to emphasize the change in the shape. So I wanted something with a recognizable uh, look. What I did was I, I took a photograph of a rose and I'll show you the original photograph here. And uh, I took the photograph over into Photoshop and uh, I selected the rose blossom uh, and uh, removed it from its background and then put it into a new document uh, where I added a, an oversaturated sky, uh, sky and had made multiple copies of the blossom um, and uh, changed their sizes and uh, their rotations um, so that I would end up with something like this. This is gloss paper, by the way. I probably should have used matte, but 
this was what I had available. So bright, bright colors, complementary colors. They look good together. Um, it's, it's very oversaturated. That's on purpose because I, I want to have lots of punch because this is going to be represented very, very small in the water drop, I think. Um, just for contrast, I, I took another photograph of, of a water lily um, and uh, did exactly the same thing. I made multiple copies of the blossom and uh, also dropped them in front of a, a, a blue sky with a couple of clouds. So these are what I'm going to photograph um, and we'll see how they work. Maybe I'm going to need to downsize the size of the, the flowers. Um, I don't know. We'll just, have to, we'll just have to see what happens when I start experimenting. I have no idea what focal length these water drop lenses are going to have. So I really don't know how best to position the water drops and the photographs I'm photographing and the camera for that matter. So it'll all be rather experimental. I brought in uh, a series, a, a selection of, of bright metallic uh, cards to try some creative uh, uh, reflected light to see if that helps with, with the image. We'll just have to see. And I brought in a, a few other things, some miniature soft boxes and uh, some other diffusion material. So let me show you the starting point and then uh, we'll, we'll take it from there and see what we come up with. So this is the basic uh, startup uh, setup that I'm gonna use and we'll, we'll see how a few test shots look here. Let me show you what I've done. This is uh, a studio tripod. It's fairly sturdy. It's an aluminum uh, tripod that works well for this kind of stuff. I have a, a uh, cross arm on it and a big sandbag on one end uh, to balance the, the, the camera. If you're doing something like this, always put one of the legs in line with the camera. Otherwise, this whole thing will tip over. I'm using my usual combination of uh, articulating arms and super clamps to hold a small sheet of clear perspex or uh, acrylic. This one is beat up. It's, uh, it's a little bit scratchy. It's not gonna be in focus, so it shouldn't make much of a difference. But if it does, I have another piece that uh, has not been unwrapped that I can use. And the idea is, the camera is positioned directly above the acrylic and I'm going to be shooting through the acrylic to photograph the photographs. As for the camera, I'm using a, a crop frame Nikon DSLR, which has my usual uh, Godox flash trigger on the hot shoe uh, connected to two Godox speed lights. Right now, they both have um, small soft boxes in front of them, but I also have some, some sheets of packing uh, foam that I like to use uh, as a second diffuser if I need it. I'll have those available. Uh, I'm starting out with the speed lights just above the base where the photographs will be and uh, I have no idea if that will work. We'll just have to take some pictures and see. The plan was that I was going to uh, try reflecting using these, these metallic cards, some different colored light and see if that adds to the, to the look or takes away from it. I've got a small camera spirit level that uh, I use for landscape photography sometimes. But it occurred to me that would be a really good way to make sure that my, my surface is completely flat because I'm using a, uh, a macro lens. My depth of field is going to be very, very shallow. And I want that because I want the actual image that we're photographing to be completely out of focus. 
All I want to see is subtle pink and purple and light blue blur. What we're going to be photographing then is the water drops. And I need for all of the water drops to be in focus. So the acrylic has to be parallel to my sensor. And that's why I'm using this. I have another one with the camera so that I can be sure that they're both completely horizontal. Um, the image is much less important and we'll, we'll fiddle around with that and see if there's anything we need to do. But the, the most critical thing is to have the water drops at, uh, I, I haven't decided how far from the camera they need to be. This is right at the minimum focus distance for this lens. So we can go down, but we can't lift it up. Uh, what else do I need to tell you about? That's it. It's a really very, very simple setup. So I think what we'll do is we'll take a, a, a test photograph of one of these, of one of these images. Don't know which one to use. Let's use the uh, purple one. It doesn't really matter which way it's positioned. Well, it does for coverage. Well, it, I may end up needing to turn the camera 90 degrees. We'll, we'll see how, we'll see how we do with this. Now, what I'm going to do is position a few drops of water, globules of water directly onto the acrylic, get them in focus and see what we've got and uh, decide where to go from there. This is a little hard to believe that <laughs> I've lost all my batteries. I just put my last, my last battery in the, in the charger and I have no idea where I put them down. There are three of them somewhere and I can't use my main camera without them. We'll just have to use this. So I have positioned the, um, the water drop. It's not actually water. I tried it with water and uh, the, the water doesn't hold its shape very well. Um, not to get the size drop I want. So what I'm using is a mixture of uh, clear sugar syrup. I'll have to get the bottle to know what it's called, but it's a, it's a sweetener uh, with about five to 10% water to just thin it a little bit. And uh, it's actually pretty impressive because I discovered that not only does it hold well as a water drop, I hope you can see that, but it suspends as well. It holds its shape perfectly, even when it's upside down. So we'll try it both ways. But for now, as soon as I can get a camera, we'll start taking pictures. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to, is to make sure that this uh, drop of syrup water is um, right in the middle. So right now I've just got one drop, but once I figure out how the drop is lensing the light, I will uh, add additional drops. Okay, we've got a problem right from the start. This, um, this is too uh, short a distance. I can't, get the, uh, I can't get the first drop in focus. So I'm gonna make absolutely sure it's, it doesn't really matter with one drop, but it is definitely gonna matter when I add additional drops because we need them all to be in focus, of course. So, there is the water drop. Now, trying to position it now right in the middle of the frame. Wow, 
Now I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with how that looks. I want you to see exactly what I am seeing. So there is, there is my water drop. This is difficult working on this long arm because uh, there's some give and it causes the camera to joggle just a little bit. I am using a remote trigger. You know what? I'm gonna have to focus stack this. That Okay, I have both flashes set at uh, 1 one twenty eighth. It's funny how all of that oversaturation in this in, in this context looks awesome. There's it, it, there is um, obviously the image is, is inverted. It's upside down, um, so. Before I forget, let me turn the image upside down and let me position one of the blooms in the dead center. There we go. All right, there's already a problem and that is the, the, uh, the blooms are positioned to uh, peripheral um, so that I'm getting edges and I, I want no edges, uh, so I'm gonna probably have to go print another picture because these are also fairly, uh... well, actually that, that might work. So as you'll see from these images, what we're getting is uh, an incredibly sharp, focused bloom, tiny, in the middle of the water drop, and then just a, a, a yellow, um, a beautiful soft yellow gradient around the water drop. And there's just enough of the blue from the sky to make the yellow flower pop inside the water uh, droplet. So let's see again. So that's the image I'm looking at now. And I we've got a problem because I'm getting a reflection from that uh, softbox on the video light. I have a feeling to get the effect that I want, I'm gonna have to turn out all the lights because I'm also seeing this light. Let's try something that I was gonna give a shot to anyway. Let me see what happens when I, when I bounce the light back onto the painting from this flash. Hmm, I like that. Let's see what the blue looks like. So this is, I'm positioning this so that this light is hitting and then bouncing down onto the plate. So you're probably wondering, <laughs> I, that's, that's fantastic. I was thinking we might need to focus stack it because it's pin sharp in the middle, but as we get to the edge of the water drop, it kind of fades into a blur, which I'm beginning to actually like. I think maybe that's the way I'm gonna want to keep it. Uh, because at full scale with a lot of water droplets, hopefully we'll have all of these flowers at the dead center of the drop. Um, let me let me try a few shots with all of the lights turned out and the curtains closed and see uh, see if that does anything. You're not going to be able to see much. Pretty much all the lights are uh, off. Okay, that's better. Now it's pitch dark. Let's see what we get here. Oh, that's really, 
that's really working well. I think that uh, the, the light's about perfect. Let me bump up the second light by a third of a stop. See what we get. You know what this looks like? It looks like it looks like a planet. I'm absolutely loving the, the, the contrasting colors or the complementary colors. Okay, so now I've raised the, the speed lights up and I'm angling them down across the photograph. Okay, the, the exposure looks great now. And uh, let me turn a few lights back on and we'll decide what to do next. Okay, so I am really liking the way this looks with a single drop. Uh, but in order to get the in order to get the photograph the way I want it, I want the drop to run just a little bit. I want it to to um, bulge in one direction, but I don't want all the drops because I'm going to make a circle of drops around the center one that's going to be the Dali esque. Um, running one. So let me see if I can make this run just by tipping it up. Look at that. It's, it's, it's almost, no, it's still perfectly round. I think I'm going to have to add a little bit more syrup water. All right, so that increased the, the drop size. Which way was this thing? I don't want to, I don't want to put anything into the drop to make it run. I want it to look completely normal, like kind of like a raindrop. And then we'll see what that effect has on the shape of the flower. And if that works, then I'll add the other drops around it and not allow it to tip. So that we'll have a surrounding uh, ring of, of blossoms with one Dali melting flower right in the middle. Okay, that is not symmetrical, but oh, that is incredible. It's not, it's not symmetrical. It kind of got a little bit wonky, so I'll have to do it again, but now it's hard to focus on the flower though. Yeah, that's going to work. But I'm going to clean this off and start fresh with a drop because I think one of the I think the reason it didn't run evenly is this drop's been sitting there under the lights and it's probably starting to crystallize. So I think if I tip the acrylic up as soon as I put the drop on, it'll give me a more natural looking teardrop. OK, so let me wash this off and we'll start over. This is the name of the uh, syrup, by the way, Caro, light corn syrup. It's not very light, but uh, as usual, I messed something up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this uh, on, on camera, but it's pretty obvious to the eyeballs. I used the wrong side of my kitchen sponge. I used the side that's made of barbed wire and it scratched the surface, just ruined it. Um, and and uh, I was wrong, I don't have another one. So uh, we're just gonna have to use this one. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one drop 
and then I'm going to let it run and then I'm going to add the other drops around it. Potentially, this will this will be all we need. Now, I just discovered that if uh, if an air bubble gets into this stuff, it's no good. The um, the air bubbles, of course, destroy the lens. Having the liquid this thick is brilliant for getting the uh, the shape that I want, but it's terrible for getting air out. Uh, it's got all kinds of air bubbles in here now. If I get a single air bubble in my drops, uh, I'm gonna have to start over. I don't want I don't want to bubble in any of the blobs of liquid. The middle drop. I'm going to make two drops and then I'm going to tip it till it runs. Okay, that's enough. And then I'll put the single drops around it while it's flat. They're different sizes, which is cool. <laughs> uh, got an air bubble in one. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to start over, but let's see how this works. I guess there's always a possibility that I could suck the air bubble out. Ah! It did suck the air bubble out. Okay, so this is what we have now is uh we have um, about 10 drops, different sizes, and then the only one that's elongated is the, is the middle one, which is gonna be for our Dali flower. As good as the surrounding ones look, the, uh, the middle one looks terrible. And now I'm getting a lot of, a lot of extra light. I think it's the, from the flash. Let's see if that helps. No, it's, it's from that studio light. Okay, let me fix that. Okay, so when I block out the video light completely and use this blue card, which is picking up a little bit of light from the flash on the other side, we're getting, you know, the problem is my flower is not dead center anymore. And the, uh, the odd shaped blob in the middle is no good. It just looks like a distorted rose. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to start all over with the, um, with the drops. Um, before I do that though, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try moving the panel even lower. Oh dear. I need an assistant. Have I said that before? Okay, so if I move it all the way down there, let's see, it makes the drop drops look even cooler actually. And strangely, the, the uh, center drop, even though it's not the way I wanted it, is getting close when it's uh, down that low. Let's try it even lower. I'm going to, uh, where's my spirit level? 
That doesn't look flat. Maybe my spirit level's broken. I didn't know they could break. Yep, the smaller the drops, the cooler it looks. And from this distance, you can actually start to see the gentle outline of the blurred petals in the back. But it looked better with this blue. Definitely better with that. Okay, so I'm I'm liking the the lower level for the acrylic. Uh, my camera settings are, are just fine. ISO is a hundred. I'm shooting at f four. Uh, and one two fiftieth of a second, which is my sync speed. Um, I, I want to shoot wide open, mainly for depth of field. I want to, to have just enough depth of field to get the, uh, the petals in the drops in focus. But let me just experiment with something here. Let me take it all the way to eight. All right, so let's get, once I get this light dialed in and add the, the blueness back, let's see what we look like now. Mm, no, no, the problem is when it's this close is the individual flowers are too big in the drops. You can't really tell their flowers. I liked it better when there was blue sky visible around the, uh, each of the blooms. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise this back up again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it on, uh, leave the aperture at f8 for right now and, and take a couple of test shots. My spirit level is broken. And my, my Dali drop in the middle is now looking more like an amoeba, which Dali would probably approve of. Yeah, that brought all the blue back in uh, between the petals. That is so much better. Okay, we have to, we have to uh, go with larger drops in order to get smaller flowers, but the flowers are in perfect focus and the image itself, you don't even know what it is. So we'll, uh, let me rewash this, redo my drops and, uh, and see what we can do. I've still got to figure out the, the teardrop in the middle because what I'm doing isn't working. If anybody has any ideas how to make this, this middle drop, teardrop shaped, would you travel forward in time and tell me? Oh, hang on. Looks like you can just do it like that. That, my friends, is exactly what I wanted to, uh, it just connected with another drop. That is exactly what I want. That, uh, that drop like that is pulling the petals of the flower down into the big uh, blob, which is exactly what I wanted, only my blob's too big now. Let me see if I can grab a quick picture of that so you can see what I'm saying. That won't, well, that'll give you an idea, but let me get this redone so it works properly and we'll see what happens then. I'm liking the overall look of the, of the flowers and the water drops look great. The, the central drop doesn't look good. And um, I've got a couple of specular highlights around the blobs. Uh, it's, it's hard getting the, the light uh, directed properly. I think I'm gonna need to get a snoot and uh, and try to limit how much of this direct light is, is getting to the, the photograph. What I was thinking was,
to have no direct light. Oh, that's exactly what I need to do, but I need more power. I'm loving that. There's just the tiniest little bit of light spill. Clearly, what we need to do is, is light the, uh, the image on the bottom with reflected light and leave the, the uh, acrylic and the sugar drops alone and just let them filter the, uh, the reflected light back into the camera. That's the, that's the images that look the best. So I'm going to have to redo the droplets again, uh, and keep redoing it till I, till I get the center drop to do what I'm trying to get it to do. Um, I'm perfectly happy with the outer drops and I love the blue reflectors, not a blue and gold, just solid blue. It just, it, it's just bouncing enough blue light into the, water lenses to, to give them that little bit of blue specularity instead of white. It looks good. I'm going to have to recharge some batteries. So let me do that and uh, get some more drops made and I'll see you right back. So it's the next day. I continued experimenting into the wee small hours. Never did get the photograph I want. Here's one that I made in Photoshop to show you what I was trying to do. It's a fake. This did, it did not happen except that I made it in Photoshop. That's what I was trying to get. Here are some pictures that are as close as I could get. And some of them, the ones I'll put at the end of the video, I really like. They're not what I was trying to do, but I really like them. Uh, the uh, camera position was at the minimum focus distance. The acrylic was about 10 and a half, 12 inches above the uh, photograph. Camera settings, uh, 1 2 50th. Um, I ended up using F8 for the rest of the photographs. I kind of liked it a little bit better, made the blobs sharper. The liquid I used was that Caro syrup, um, light clear syrup, works I think as well as anything. I used two speed lights, Godox 860s, um, and I used them at pretty low power. It was a 1 64th power, bounced directly into blue cards, and then the blue cards were angled down onto the flowers. I discovered a couple of other things that, that uh, you might want to look at, and I've, I've made notes on the photograph so you can see what I'm trying to show you. But uh, yeah, don't try doing this upside down. First of all, it doesn't work. And second of all, you forget that they're upside down. And when you put the acrylic down on the table, you guessed it. <laughs> it's got 20 drops of sugary glue, which goes onto everything and doesn't come off again. So there you go. I think I mentioned this, this at the beginning of the video, but I did fix my computer. I was going to make a video of it. And when I had the back off and looked inside, I decided I needed to actually pay attention to what I was doing. So I stopped recording, but uh, I kept the recording going long enough for you to see how revolting the inside of my computer is. I mean, it's growing hair and uh, the batteries, all six of them looked like they were ready to pop. So no wonder my computer was bulging, but it's fixed now. Um, and that means that I am now officially an Apple hardware expert. It does not mean that I got lucky. I could as just as easily have killed myself doing this. So don't try it at home. And definitely don't try it just because I got lucky doing it. The last thing before I go, I'm going to ask a favor of you. I want you to tell me, no, better yet, show me what I did wrong. Somebody has already done this and knows the answer to, to getting this look that I was looking for. It's probably something like... <laughs> You've got to use sea urchin blood, you fool. If there's some obvious thing that I've missed, if you're creative like I am, 
No, seriously, if you're creative and you can see what it was I missed, please tell me or send me a picture and I'll share it with the masses. So this was a fun project. I, I really did actually enjoy it, even though I couldn't get exactly what I was looking for. But I'm gonna show you the rest of the pictures that I took. Um, I've already posted some of these on Instagram and people like them, so that's a, that's a start. I'll be back in a few days with something categorically not creative. <laughs> Until then, please stay safe. Don't get or give the virus. Just ch be chill and let's get rid of this thing once and for all so we can go on about our business. I have a trip to Iceland that I want to make this year and I can't do it if you don't wear a mask. That's um, a bit of a stretch, but still, wear a mask. It'll do you good. I'll make you a mask if you have to. If I have to make it for you to wear it, I made camouflage masks. Trouble is, I can never find them. Camouflage. <laughs> okay, that's enough. I'll see you in a few days. Please take care, and uh, I'll see you soon. All the best. Mm -hmm.